Greetings Brookings Bio students, this is Mrs. Rydell and in this video we are going to draw out the carbon cycle. So I'm going to ask you to turn your paper the long way, uh, going side, by, uh, side to side on your uh, table and we're going to put in some land, uh, just like we did before in our water cycle, if you watched the last video. And we're going to put in a little water kind of on the edge. And this could be surface water of any kind, could be a lake, a pond, a river, maybe the ocean edge. And then we're going to add, in our water cycle, we put mountains in our picture. And um, we're going to put on this side over here um, a volcano. So you can kind of make your volcano over on the side here. If you want to make it into an active volcano, you could put some lava kind of running down the side. A little bit. So add some uh, arrow color to your picture. And maybe we have a few, put some, uh, a little bit of fire and uh, a little bit of smoke coming out. Okay. And I think we're ready to put in our cycle. So this is carbon cycle, so I'm going to have you label that across the top. And carbon now is going to cycle, remember it's one of those biogeochemical cycles, the bio part, partly um, spend, the carbon is going to spend time in organisms, living things. Um, the geo part, um, part of the time on land, and this is a cycle where the nutrients are going to be passing through the e um, ecosystem. So um, we're going to start with carbon in the atmosphere. And carbon exists in the atmosphere as a gas form when it uh, buddies up with oxygen and makes carbon dioxide. So we're going to put that in our picture. I'm going to make a little gas cloud here because carbon dioxide is a gas um, in the atmosphere. And one of the ways that carbon gets into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide is when we burn things. So when we have our volcano erupting here, it's going to put carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. So I'm going to label this volcanic activity. Uh, maybe we want to label this as a gas in our atmosphere. Okay, we said this is uh, partly a biogeochemical cycle, so we're going to put some organisms in here. I'm going to have you add a plant of some kind, green plant. So I'm going to make a plant here. Remember the purpose of this is not that you're making an award-winning art picture that could be hanging in a museum. The purpose of doing this is that we can um, put some vocab words on things and, and see how the cycles work, walk through the steps. So I'm going to put a plant here and then I'm going to add an organism that might eat the plant. So I'm going, to put, I'm going to make a little bunny rabbit here. Give him a little tail. Okay, so living things, part of the time carbon is going to cycle through living things. And one of the ways that carbon is removed from the atmosphere is um, something that plants do. If you remember back to our chapter we talked about um, plants taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and using it to make food for themselves, make sugar using the energy from sunlight. Um, so that process of removing carbon dioxide and putting it into the body of the plant as a sugar molecule is photosynthesis. So we're going to put photosynthesis. We're following the pathway now of how carbon is going to move through our ecosystem. Now Carbon is going to move from our producers to our consumers when they eat the plants. So we're going to pass the carbon this way, and I'm going to put eat here. Consumers eat the producers, and um, they're going to use that sugar now, burn the sugar in their mitochondria. We did a whole chapter on that, burning sugar to get the energy we need to charge up our ATPs, and that process of burning sugar now remember burning when we're burning something we release carbon dioxide that's one of the 
products of respiration is carbon dioxide. We exhale that out into the atmosphere again. So I'm going to put a little arrow here between my animal back to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And remember, plants do it too. The reason plants are making that sugar is so they can burn it in their mitochondria and have the energy they need to do uh, cellular activity. So I'm going to put another little arrow this way. And I'm going to write the word in between cellular respiration. Remember, both plants and animals, producers and consumers, do cellular respiration. And that process of burning sugar puts carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. We give that off as a waste gas. Um, remember we talked about gases dissolving in water, and so one of the th ways that carbon can leave the atmosphere um, and become part of the ecosystem is that um, those carbon dioxide gas molecules um, can dissolve in water. So if you have uh, atmosphere, air touching the surface water, some of those gas molecules, remember we talked about um, carbon dioxide dissolving in in pop, for example, they bubble the carbon dioxide gas through the sugar water, and that's what puts the fizzy bubbles in the pop, is that there's gas dissolved in it. And obviously a lake or a pond isn't going to have as much carbon dioxide as a, as a can of Coke, but some of those gas molecules in the air are going to dissolve, and that's going to put carbon dioxide into our surface water. Okay, so this is gas dissolved in the lake, dissolved in the water. Um, and that makes that gas available for the organisms that live in the water. So we're going to um, make a little food chain um, down in our water here. We're going to need a water plant. So I'm going to put a little plant here. And we're going to need a consumer that's going to eat our plant. So you can put some kind of a water critter in, any kind you like. Um, if you want to make this be an ocean, it could be an ocean critter. And that carbon dioxide gas now is going to be taken up by the water plants that are doing photosynthesis, just like the land plants, and put that carbon dioxide into molecule of, of glucose now that's going to be inside of our plant and pass that carbon to our consumer when we eat. Consumers eat the, um, eat the plants. And then now burn our sugar. We're going to burn the sugar in our mitochondria and returns that carbon dioxide back. And remember, plants are doing it too. Puts carbon dioxide back into the water as uh, when the uh, organisms do respiration. So I'm going to put respiration here. So we kind of got a little cycle going here in our water. We got a little cycle going on land. Um, think about what's going to happen now in our food chains as, as our um, food molecules are passed from one organism to the next. Up the, talked about uh, primary consumers, secondary consumers. As it's passing along the line, the energy from the food um, being burned is going to um, provide energy for the organisms to do their cellular activities. But some of that energy is going to be um, lost as heat. And some of those molecules now, um, when an organism dies and is not eaten as part of the food chain and their bodies decompose, those molecules are going to go back into the ecosystem. Back. So I'm going to make a little connection here between my little consumer here and putting those molecules back and they're going to go back in two ways first of all when death happens organisms die their bodies are returned the molecules are returned to the ecosystem and also when they make waste when they go to the bathroom those um, leftover molecules that aren't digested or absorbed by your digestive tract are going to also go back into the ecosystem and we have organisms that are going to help that happen so i'm going to put a little label here this is our decomposers are going to help those food molecules get back into the soil. Okay, they're deposited in the soil.
They become part of the soil, part of the land, part of the rocks. Um, and they get uh, broken down by our decomposers. Okay, some of those uh, molecules, um, as they build up in the soil and the layers happen um, underground for a long period of time, they're going to become chemically changed. I'm going to just kind of make some, this is underground here. Underground fossil fuels. Carbon organic molecules that have carbon in them, when they spend time under heat and pressure, a long time under the surface of the ground, um, they become fossil fuels. That's things like coal, oil, natural gas. Um, and humans are, are using those carbon sources. Not only do, um, does carbon, when we burn sugar, provide energy for our bodies, but we can burn um, molecules that have carbon in them um, in our factories, in our cars, and use that for energy to provide electricity and make our cars go. So we're going to put a little connection here between underground fossil fuels and humans. So let's add something to our picture where humans could be part of that interaction. So I'm going to make a little factory here. It doesn't have to be big and fancy. Here's my little factory. And put some windows on it. And I'm going to give it a little smokestack on top here. Some smokestacks. And we're going to take those fossil fuels from under the ground. And we dig them up. We drill for them. We pull them out of the water. And we burn them. And when we burn things, that sends uh, carbon, carbon dioxide back into our atmosphere. Let's make a little car next to our factory. And remember, we're burning fossil fuels in our car for gasoline as a fossil fuel. We burn coal to make electricity. And that's going to put carbon dioxide back into our atmosphere. I'm going to switch colors here so you can read my label a little bit better. Uh, how about green? I'm going to put burning fossil fuels. Burning fossil fuels puts carbon back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. So we have a couple ways that carbon can get into our atmosphere. It gets there from um, volcanic activity, burning fossil fuels, from respiration, from organisms on the planet. Okay, so we got a connection between uh, atmosphere and land and, uh, and water, but we don't really have a connection back now. Um, so let's make a little connection. Our uh, water organisms also, when they die and have, we're going to put death and make waste, are going to put their bodies back into the bottom of the pond. Right? They become land over time. Remember, this is kind of a connection with what you learned about in eighth grade as part of the rock cycle. Okay, we have one last thing that's going to happen because some of those um, nutrients we talked about kind of carbon dioxide in the lake being in gas form, but carbon can exist um, in the soil, not only in the soil, but also in the water as a solid form. Um, it's in the form of, of um, minerals and rocks and um, other kinds of organic matter that gets into the pond that's not a gas. So when we have runoff, rain happens, and remember, we're going to run along the surface of the land. Not only does this uh, water run into our lakes and ponds and rivers, but anything that the Oh, let's make some runoff here. Anything that happens to be in the soil is going to be carried into the water. Um, and put back into the ecosystem. So we kind of have a have a, a big cycle going here. Um, carbon part of the time, carbon dioxide as gas in our atmosphere. Part of the time as a solid, as part of organic um, molecules in living things. Part of the time as organic molecules in our soil, in our land. Um, and part of the time in the water, in the ecosystem. Okay, I think that takes care of our carbon cycle. Um, stay tuned for our next cycle, which is nitrogen cycle.